Hi there, George from the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I'm going to run through a quick Dynamo script that shows you how to randomly cycle through family types. Um, in this case, we're looking at an application of cycling people um, in a visualization, quite a common task. So we're going to randomize family types using Dynamo. So the first application I'm going to show you is just how to work with placed families of random types already and how to randomize them into new types. Um, but a more relevant application is where you want to place people on mass. Um, without having to think about what type of family whilst you're placing it and then use a cycler to basically randomly assign them after. So without further ado, we'll actually start the script itself. Um, so we're running, running in this version of Dynamo for anyone that wants to follow along at home. So we're basically in a project at the moment that contains a whole bunch of entourage or people families. Um, you'll see here there's a few placed. At the moment I've just got all of the same type placed, which obviously isn't really um, what you'd want for a visualization where you've got lots of people at the same time. So I've got a whole set of families, um, men, women, etc., and a dog. Um, I don't want the whole crowd to turn into dogs, so I'm going to look at a way to work just with things um, to do with men and women in my families. So you'll see that they all have things in common in that they all contain man underscore. So I'm going to use that as my filtering criteria. So I've set up a couple of nodes we're going to need to use already, um, just as building blocks. So I'm just going to expand Dynamo so it's all we can see. So we're going to work with the category of Entourage. We're using the Categories node. We're going to be dealing with the string man underscore, so that's our filtering criteria. We're going to need to get the family name of all the placed elements already um, to make sure that they meet the criteria of our filter. We're also going to have to get all family types of the category in the project, so that's how we can access the types that aren't placed currently. Um, we're also going to need to filter out certain types of families using a string contains to map a filter by boolean mask in order to manage just the families that we want to deal with. That way we can ignore things like dogs, vehicles, trees, etc. Um, we're going to use a random list in order to generate a, a seed to cycle those into new family types. So this is basically a random list as integers, which I believe is from the clockwork package. Yes, it's from clockwork. Um, most of the good nodes I find come from clockwork. And we're finally going to set the type of the family at the end, and then going to set a random rotation as well. So to begin with, we're just going to take all the family types of entourage in our families, and we're also going to take all elements of category and get their family name. So if I run this script, you'll see that I'll get a list of all the family types, and then a list of all the instances of placement and the family name. And after that, we need to actually filter both lists in order to make sure we're dealing with what we care about. So we're going to take the family name into a string. We're going to search for our filtering criteria. We're going to ignore case in this scenario, but you could uh, care about case if you needed to. We're going to take another set of those as well. And we're just going to filter the family types instead, but we're still looking for the same criteria. So if I run this on the family types and I filter the elements. I run this. We should get all but one. So you'll see it's found all the people we've placed, but it's excluded the dog. Likewise, with our family types, it's excluded the dog as an optional type, and it's just found the men and the women that we want to use. So in this case, we're going to create random lists in order to randomly distribute how these are set up. So we need to count the number of potential options of family types. So we're going to use a list count to figure out how many potential candidates we have. So we have nine potential candidates. So we're gonna want a random list as integers between zero and eight. So we're gonna do a just a code block of x take one. And we're gonna make that our maximum and our minimum will be one. And the amount will be, sorry, I've done that incorrectly. What we need is the count to be nine, so the amount. So if I run that, you see I end up with a set of random numbers for each of those. So we have uh, nine family types here, but then we have nine random numbers generated as well between one and eight. And then we feed those into a get item at index. And from the list of possible family types, we want to get that random outcome. So if I run this, I get a random list of family types, um, which should, you'll see is quite a decent distribution of type three, two, five, women, men, etc. I can cycle the seed to get a different random distribution similarly. 
So this is how we can completely randomize what we're doing. So I'll just leave those nodes. So these are our family types we're going to assign. And from there, we need to set the types as well. So we're going to take these instances and set their family type. And we're also going to set their rotation as well, but I'll just show you what this does without the family type being set. So we've got a whole bunch of people here in the model, just waiting to be set to the right type. And if I run this script as it stands, you'll see that it's randomly reassigned those people. And if I reassign the seed and run this again, you'll see I can get different distributions after that. There's some interesting things happening here, actually. Ah, uh, okay, sorry, I've used the wrong count. So the count actually needs to be the number of family instances, that's right. So we need to count the number of things in the list. I actually counted the wrong side of the list. So we're gonna say how many things are in this list, and that's how many random values we need. We need one per type. There you go. Now we have a purely random distribution per type. So this is quite helpful in creating randomized crowds, uh, but also adding things you might want to ignore. So let's say we've just got a, a crowd we're setting up. So typically we could just do that by placing a lot of what I call actors, people that need to be changed. Obviously this crowd's not very realistic. So we just run the script and suddenly we've got a crowd. The problem is they're all facing the same way. Um, so they're still not very realistic. So after that, we just need to set the rotation to a random number. So again, we're gonna take this. However, our maximum and our minimum are gonna be different. We're gonna do zero and 360. And then we feed this into the degree field and the instance is the one that we're passing through the type we set. And now you'll see they all face random directions. So it's quite a powerful script um, that can be run very quickly. You can see just how dy dynamic this is. And obviously I can compound the number of people that I'm considering as well. And you'll see that it's still quite a quick script to act. And being able to cycle the seed means you can get a lot of options out of it. Um, whilst keeping people in the same position. And obviously you can add other things to the scene that you can filter out, such as people walking their dog. So the dogs won't be affected, but the people will. So a very powerful script. Um, it's actually what I used on my site demonstration model to set up all the people in my scene. So I can similarly rerun this particular script in this context. So if I just reopen Dynamo. I'll rerun the script just to show it in action in a, a live model to prove that it actually works entirely. But I think you get the gist of how this is meant to work. While I'm waiting for that, I'll just bring up some other applications for this. So you could use this for planting families to get random trees and bushes, vehicles. Um, you could use this to apply particular color schemes to rooms in a project at, at random um, across a, a variety of rooms if you didn't have necessarily a logic to how you wanted to do it. And you can obviously work with what I call finite resources, so a limited number of things. So you'd have to make sure the list basically extracts out of a, a limited number of conditions rather than purely random. Um, you could also do what, a, what I call cyclical loops. So having lots of different elements that you want to toggle through the same condition at once. You might want all of your man one to turn into man two, for example, and keep cycling that way so that your crowd is semi-random, but not entirely random, if that makes sense. So there we go, Dynamo's open. So if I just run this script now, and I run that, you'll see all my people cycle in my scene. And obviously I can only see two there, but this is applying across my whole scene. So I can go back here and also see that my seed is impacting everything in the scene. So it's very powerful, uh, quite a handy script. So hopefully that helps give you something that you can build and add to your arsenal of tools in Dynamo. Um, so thanks for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions on the workflow or similar scripts and applications, feel free to leave them down below and feel free to follow and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Uh, thanks. Take care. Bye.